Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, I'm going to discuss with you, I'm going to provide you with technical techniques that hackers use to hack any cell phone. This is not going to be any kind of fluff. This is going to be actual concrete techniques that they use. It's going to be very technical. So bear with me. Without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. Okay, so hackers can hide links using Bitly, right, uh, to hack cell phones. And they do that with the links, obviously, using Bitly. So follow these steps. Log into your Bitly account, create one, right? And then log in, access your Bitly dashboard, locate the link, find the URL you want to hide, edit the link, click on the link to open it, then select the edit button. Hide the link, right? In the edit sidebar, click on the hide link option. You will be prompted to confirm this action. Once confirmed, the link will be no longer, you know, it will no longer appear in your main Bitly dashboard, although it will still be functional for anyone who has it, right? That is how hackers are able to do it. They, they can use a, a malware in a link, send it to your phone, and then it's not really what you think. Unhiding the Bitly link, however, if you wish to unhide the link later, you can do this by filtering hidden links, right? Click on the filter button in the Bitly dashboard and select only hidden bit links. Select the link to unhide, click edit for the desired link, unhide the link, right? You can click on unhide the, you know, the link and confirm your choice. The link will then reappear in your main dashboard. You can also use JavaScript, right? That was Bitly. Now let's go into JavaScript. You know, uh, you can use JavaScript to display fake URLs, right? To, dis to display a fake URL using JavaScript without actually navigating to a different page. You can utilize the history API. Here's how you do that. The history API allows you to manipulate the browser's history and changing the URL displayed in the address bar without triggering a page reload. That is the push state method, right? And Peter, please put that on the screen for the viewers. Okay, so that they can see. If you like this video so far, please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. If you like this information, if you're learning, hit that subscribe button and the like button. So this will update the URL in the address bar to display the fake URL without reloading the page or navigating away from the current content, right? There's also the replace state method. If you don't want to create a new history entry, you can use a history.replace state, right? And Peter, you could put that code on the screen. This method replaces the current history entry instead of adding a new one. So now here are some important considerations to take. There's the same origin policy. You can only modify the path and query string of the URL. The protocol domain and port must remain the same due to security restrictions. There's also user experience, right? Be cautious when using this technique as it may confuse users if the displayed URL doesn't match the actual content. There's the SEO impact, right? Search engines may not properly index pages with manipulated URLs. There's browser support. While widely supported, ensure compatibility with your target browsers now here is a simple example of how you know this might be used in real practice especially by a hacker right and Peter please put this code on the screen so the viewers can see it okay so uh, this function checks if the browser supports the history API before attempting to change the URL right and there's the handling page reload so remember that if the user refreshes the page with a fake url the server needs to handle that request appropriately you may need to implement server-side uh, routing or redirection to manage these scenarios by using you know these javascript techniques you can create the illusion of navigating the different urls without actually changing the page content which can be useful for certain types of web applications or testing scenarios so there's also a link manipulation, right? Hackers can do that to hack anybody's phone. Now, uh, when it comes to link manipulation, that is a technique used by hackers to modify URLs in web applications, potentially leading to security vulnerabilities. So here are some key points that you will want to know about this, right? So how it works, L uh, link manipulation occurs when an application embeds user input into the path or domain of URLs within application responses. An attacker can exploit this by constructing malicious links that, if clicked by users, modify the target URLs, right? In unexpected ways, Here's, here are the common techniques. There's the URL parameter manipulation. That's when modifying query parameters in URLs to access unauthorized resources or inject malicious code. So when it comes to hacking phones, I'm, I'm coming from the standpoint of like a link, right? Maybe a, 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 a smishing, you know, you get a link, you click on it, 
and um, you know things of that nature. There's also path uh, traversio, right? Manipulating file paths to access files outside the intended directory. There's domain spoofing, right? Creating URLs that appear legitimate but actually point to malicious sites. There's URL shortening, right? Using URL shortening services to obscure the true destination of a link. Now there are potential impacts, right? Redirecting users to phishing sites, bypassing access controls, leaking sensitive data via referrer headers. There's enabling cross-site scripting, right? XSS attacks, uh, and then causing unintended actions within the application. Now, here are some prevention methods that you can use to uh, counterattack this this kind of uh, cyber attack, right? You can use whitelist to restrict user input to save values. You can validate and sanitize all user supplied input. You can avoid, right? You can avoid dynamically setting link targets with untrusted data. You can implement proper URL coding. There's, you know, you can also use content security policy headers. Now, uh, there's also another piece of uh, uh, tools that you can use to help identify you know, potential link manipulation. And one of those tools popular is Burp Suite, right? Uh, and tools like Burp Suite can identify potential link manipulation vulnerabilities through static and dynamic code analysis. However, manual review is often needed to confirm exploitability by understanding these techniques. Developers can implement proper defenses to prevent uh, link manipulation attacks and protect their applications and users. But that's how hackers do it, right? But let's let's explain how to you know you can prevent your phone from being hacked. Secure your device, right? Use a strong password or biometric lock. Set up a complex password, PIN, or biometric lock like fingerprint or face ID to prevent unauthorized physical access to your device. Avoid using simple codes like 1234 or 000. Keep your phone with you, right? Physical access is one of the easiest ways for hackers to compromise your device so you can, you know, keep it secure and within sight. Be cautious of public Wi-Fi, right? Avoid connecting to unsecured public Wi-Fi networks which hackers can exploit to intercept your data. Use a VPN for additional protection when a public, uh, you know, when on public networks, right? Be very skeptical. Don't just go on Starbucks and, you know, whatever the case may be, just, just to just do whatever you want. Uh, also manage apps and software, right? Only download apps from official stores. Stick to trusted sources like the Apple App Store or Google Play Store to avoid malicious apps. Keep your phone and apps updated, right? Regularly update your operating system and apps to patch security vulnerabilities. Be wary of app permissions. Review and limit the permissions you grant to apps only allowing access to necessary features, okay? Also protect your data. That's another point, right? Use two-factor authentication. Enable 2FA on important accounts to add an extra layer of security. MFA, you're gonna hear that a lot from me. It's, it's, it's just another layer of security that is really good for you. Uh, you don't want to also avoid storing sensitive information, right? Don't keep passwords, pins, or credit card details directly on your phone. Regularly clear your browsing data, delete your history, your cookies, and cache to minimize the data that could be accessed by hackers. You click that link, they can get access to that data. That's not what we want. And then there's additional security measures, right? Install reputable security software. Use antivirus and anti-malware apps from trusted providers to detect and prevent threats. Be cautious of phishing attempts. Don't click on suspicious links or download attachments from unknown sources. Enable, right? Enable remote tracking and wiping. Set up features like find my iPhone or find my device to locate or erase your phone if it's lost or stolen. So by implementing these practices, right, you can significantly reduce the risk of your phone from being hacked and protect your personal information. We all know that phones are, you know, there, there, there are new, there are new wallet, there are new library, there are new, they, they, we, we depend on our phones more than ever, right? So because we depend on, you know, we depend on our phones, we have so many secret private information, personal information, it's our job to protect and to do what we can <laughs> to, to keep hackers from hacking our phones because hackers are becoming more and more sophisticated you know ai and ai can be used you know hackers are now using ai to hack and then that nature uh, you know so uh, but i wanted to you know i i came uh you know my approach in this video was from a phishing link that's just a link right you think it's a link to a trusted source but it's hidden right that's why i talked about those are the things. So if you like this video, if you learned a lot from this video, please hit that subscribe button and the like button. If you like this video, you, you enjoyed it, you, you learned something new, please hit that like button and the subscribe button. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe and see you on the next video.